Great. And Neil, uh, how about yourself? What are you excited about these days? Yeah, um, our group is quite global. We manage uh, money for 100-ish families around the world. Um, so from our seat, we're investing globally across strategies and, and uh, market caps and, 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 and uh, asset classes. And I think from, from a top-down view, one area that I'm particularly excited about is, is biotech. Um, so I was paying close attention to the earlier panel, and I'll take a little bit of a different uh, approach. Um, so number one, the rolling two-year S&P, I think, is depending on where the market is today, five or six percent down. Um, the rolling XBI, two years down 50. Uh, so there's a, depending on the day, a roughly 40 to 50 percent spread between the rolling two years between the subset of biotech stocks versus the broader market. Um, and if you start drilling down on what that means, um, one stat that I think is really interesting is that 20% of the S&P's biotech stocks are trading below the amount of cash they have on hand. So I think that that's a really interesting stat because the, the market is effectively not expecting these companies to last for more than a couple of quarters. And for me, that's a particularly uh, perfect environment for active management and stock picking. And I think from an from, uh, um, uh, alpha perspective, uh, you know, the, 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 this particular sector in, in terms of biotech, you know, from just speaking from our perspective, we're investing in, in managers that are practicing doctors, that are seeing patients, that are able to apply what they see in their, their work to the portfolio management. So, I mean, I think that's alpha, that's edge. And, and you know, from the perspective of being a fiduciary and allocator of capital, um, where do I think the opportunities are going to be in the next, you know, few quarters? Things like, you know, we, we touched on before the uh, uh, weight loss drugs, GLP-1s, um, the possibility for the first trillion dollar drug coming out out of those uh, signs. Well, another stat I like pointing out is that the Human Genome Project was 20 years ago. And at that time, it cost $100 million to map one gene, um, one strain. Um, that number is less than $200 today. And to think about the commercial applications in terms of drug discovery and clinical trials and the speed of being able to get drugs to market we saw with the COVID vaccine. You know, with less than one year, we had three, three vaccines come up. So I think from an from a investor's perspective, that's what I'm most excited about from the opportunity to generate returns for my clients. What do you think about, um, you know, that next year being an election year, that it could be, you know, a topic um, uh, could be challenging for things like in healthcare, pharmaceuticals, biotech. Is that uh, potentially could be a headwind, I mean, to the biotech sector? I, you know, I would take the view that it's a tailwind. I think it's a tailwind for active management because if you, if you drill down to these companies, it's really going to, like, think of it, uh, there's, you know, uh, for, each, for each public company, there's five important C-level roles. So every single year, you know, X percent are coming onto the market. And these are jobs that are getting filled by people who maybe are not qualified to do these jobs from a fundamental perspective. So I think it's, it's the perfect environment to be able to, to do your diligence, to do your homework, and be in a position to, to, to go long short some of, these, some of these options. It's also interesting in the biotech sector, it's a set, sector that's very sensitive to interest rates. And you look at this year, even though rates backed up a lot during the year, uh, real rates, you know, I mean, 10-year yields started the year around 385. It almost touched 5%. But that didn't hurt things like uh, NASDAQ and large cap tech. But other interest rate sensitive things like biotech, utilities, really went down a lot. Now we saw what happened last week as uh, bonds rallied considerably. Uh, could this, is it, um, how much of a view do you think one needs to have on rates to be, uh, to lean into in favor of biotech? You know, for this sector, we don't think about rates too much. I, I think it's, you know, one, one thing that's interesting is that the, I think the S, healthcare is like 15% of the S&P, and biotech is a tiny percentage of that. So what, what that means is that the large mutual funds, the big dollar investors, don't feel they need positions in the space. So those companies, that seven, 800 public companies, don't get institutional capital that they would otherwise. And, that, and I think that, that definitely depresses prices, and they don't get this rising tide, fits all boats type uh, effect that other stocks might. It's very interesting. As you pointed out, it's um, given how much biotech as a sector is retrenched, it's quite a, a bit of a contrarian view, but one, if you have a little bit slightly longer perspective, it looks like uh, something very exciting. 